Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point on AFR Talk. Great to have you along for the ride. We'll up up the phone lines a little bit earlier today since we only had one segment of phone calls yesterday. 888-589-8840 is the number to call. If you got a reaction to that profile that Channel 4 in the U.K. did, be glad uh, to hear that. And we can talk about other things that may be on your mind. I've got some good news from the Sanctity of Life uh, front. Here's a poll indicating this is K, uh, K of C Maris poll. Knights of Columbus and Maris did a poll that indicates, ready for this, 83% of the American people favor significant restrictions on abortion. 83%. That's more than 8 out of every 10 Americans, 8 out of 10 of the people that you know believe that abortion should be significantly restricted in one way or another. And this number is up four points from last year. Last year it was at 79%. This year it's at 83%. Only 11%, ladies and gentlemen, only 11% of the American people believe that abortion should be allowed at any time for any reason. They're the extremists. They are the fringe. It's Barack Obama and Planned Parenthood. They're the ones that are out in their own orbit, detached from reality. They're not in the mainstream. They're off out somewhere near Jupiter or Pluto or someplace like that in their own orbit. And 58% of the American people believe that abortion is morally wrong. So we are fighting a winnable war, ladies and gentlemen. There is evidence uh, right there that we are winning the war for the hearts and minds of the American people when it comes to the issue of abortion. Now, you may be aware that uh, Chuck Hagel, we talked about this yesterday with Elaine Donald. This is clip two, Rob. Chuck Hagel has been nominated by Barack Obama to be the next Secretary of Defense, and we went over some of the severe problems that Chuck Hagel has. Uh, Iran loves him, and Israel is suspicious of him. That's all you need to know. That's the only thing that you need to know about uh, uh, about Chuck Hagel and whether he's a good choice for Secretary of Defense. Iran loves him, and Israel is very suspicious, very distrustful, have some serious reservations about Chuck Hagel. And we saw that he has uh, shifted gears on the gay agenda, now a big-time supporter of the gay agenda, used to be pro-family, defender of natural marriage. Just a huge issue, as Elaine explained yesterday, a huge issue because... This issue of homosexuality is going to be front and center in the military for years now. We've got DOMA being defended in court. That's one of the things that restricts benefits in the military to man-woman marriages for federal purposes. Marriages defined as one man and one woman. You've got the issue of chaplains doing same-sex weddings on military installations. That has been forbidden, prohibited in the Defense Authorization Act. President Obama hates it. He doesn't like it. He issued a signing statement. I don't believe in this. I think this is a bad idea. Basically what he's saying, I think chaplains, Christian chaplains, ought to be forced to do same-sex weddings on military installations, whether they like it or not. So there are huge issues at stake here. Now, uh, I've got clip, uh, clip number two, Rob, the Maddow clip, the first of the Maddow uh, clips. Um, and... Rachel Maddow, she started off as a big-time supporter of Chuck Hagel until, until she found out that he uh, has been pro-life in the past and has been pro-family in uh, the past. So he, she starts by going off on the Republicans that were raising questions about Chuck Hagel. So this was then, then we'll play her position after she learned some things about Chuck Hagel. But here is Rachel Maddow before she found out that Chuck Hagel was pro-life and pro-family at one point in his career. Mr. Crystal has a fresh deal going. Now, his new project is that he wants to stop the nomination of former Senator Chuck Hagel as Secretary of Defense. President Obama today chose the Republican from Nebraska for that job. And despite having been fine with Mr. Hagel, even as a possible vice president for George W. Bush in 2000, Bill Kristol is now leading the opposition to Chuck Hagel at defense. Bill Kristol, the same guy who said Iraq would take two months, who says that the only consequences of us bombing Iran already would be good consequences, the man who thought up the Sarah Palin vice presidency, the one man in America who can least be the arbiter of what is reasonable in national security. That same one guy, Bill Kristol, now bought ChuckHagel.com, where you can go to learn that Bill Kristol believes that Chuck Hagel is not a responsible option. 
Oh, Senator Hagel, may you always be blessed with comically non-self-aware enemies. All right, comically non-self-aware enemies. Would that include you, Rachel Maddow? Let's drop down to clips four and five. Here's Rachel Maddow last night after she found out that Chuck Hagel was pro-life at one point. In fact, he had the same position on abortion that Todd Akin did and that Richard Murdoch had. That rape was not even something that ought to be an exception because it was so rare. He did not believe in abortion uh, uh, based on uh, health of the mother uh, or what's the or, or incest. Didn't believe in those exceptions uh, and didn't even support an exception for rape because it was so rare. Now, Rachel Maddow, all of a sudden she found out he was pro-life and was pro-marriage. Now she changed her tune. Now she's one of those, what, what did she call it? Nonsensical, non-self-aware enemies. Let's listen to clip number four. Where does Defense Secretary nominee Chuck Hagel stand on this issue that Leanne Panetta thinks is so important? As a senator, Hagel repeatedly voted against amendments to allow service women even to pay for abortion services at military hospitals out of their own pockets. So not only will your insurance not cover it, not be allowed to cover it, according to Chuck Hagel, you shouldn't even have access to it in military hospitals. What, go find a local service provider, deployed service woman? So again, on the surface, a nominee's sensitivity and politics on issues like sexual assault and abortion would seem quite irrelevant to a job like Secretary of Defense. But it is right in the middle of the kinds of things the Secretary of Defense has to deal with now. So that's Rachel Maddow last night. Here is a second clip when she talks about the issue of the homosexual agenda. If the Defense of Marriage Act fails at the Supreme Court, for example, yeah, that's going to affect whether or not there are same-sex marriage rights in various states all around the country, right? But, but one of the very first things it's going to affect is day-to-day -day life for members of the military. There's a whole list of very specific things that other family members get in the military that family members of gay service members right now are banned from getting specifically because of the Defense of Marriage Act. So if the Supreme Court strikes down the Defense of Marriage Act that's banning these policies, it may very well be Chuck Hagel deciding the very sensitive issue of whether a gay service member's family gets this kind of equal treatment that he or she would never have had before. So Chuck Hagel's position on gay rights, which on the surface would seem totally irrelevant to a job running the military, actually could not be more central to the most sensitive things that he might have to make a decision on personally, right away, if he gets this gig. So that's Rachel Maddow, all of a sudden a sworn, fierce opponent of Chuck Hagel. The night before, she couldn't say enough uh, nice things about him. There's lunatic kooks on the right wing were opposed to him. They were nonsensical. They were non-self-aware enemies of Chuck Hagel. Now she has happily joined our growing group. Now, clip number three, this is Chuck Hagel. This is the guy that President Obama wants to be our Secretary of Defense. He wants this guy to be in charge of protecting our security the security of your wives and your families. Uh, and this is Chuck Hagel on Al Jazeera, the, the outfit, the oil-funded outfit that bought Al Gore's current TV. Al Jazeera now owns current TV. In fact, Al Gore got a, about a $100 million slice out of that deal. He is now richer than Mitt Romney on oil money. So Al Gore is now richer than Mitt Romney. He's got a greater net worth than Mitt Romney. His net worth's up around three hundred million. Mitt Romney around two hundred and fifty million. And Al Gore got there on the in, entirely on the scam of global warming. Got a story in the stack. Polar bear populations are at all time highs. Remember Al Gore in his movie had that polar bear floating away on this little ice flow, desolate lonely, heading into oblivion like the Eskimos used to put the guy on the ice floe and just kind of send him out to die. It was kind of like that. Polar bear populations are at an all-time high. The whole thing is a scam. We're going to talk to Cal Beisner at the top of the next hour. You may have read the stories. Last year, the hottest year uh, uh, on record. So the global warming enthusiast out in force will give you some balance and perspective on that. But here's Chuck Hagel appearing on Al Jazeera. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, what I want with somebody as Secretary of Defense, I want somebody that believes in American exceptionalism, that believes in America as it was, was founded, that believes that America has been the greatest force for good in the history of the world, which is simply a historically true fact. I want somebody who believes in American exceptionalism, somebody who believes that the values that we have honored and, per, and pursued and displayed 
are the values that the entire rest of the world needs to embrace if they want to come out of darkness and poverty into prosperity and light. But that's not how Chuck Hagel sees the United States of America. Let's listen. We've got an email from Wendy Day. She writes to us from Georgia here in the United States, and she writes, Can the rest of the world be persuaded to give up their arsenal when the image of the United States is that of the world's bully? Don't we indeed need to change the perception and the reality before asking folks to lay down their arms, nuclear or otherwise? Mm -hmm. Well, her observation is a good one, and uh, it's relevant. Uh, yes uh, to her question. And uh, again, I think that's all part of leadership. So he says, yes, the United States is the world's bully. Remember yesterday, Jay Carney said, look, the reason he picked Chuck Hagel is he's in sync with the president's positions. He's in alignment with the president's positions on a whole raft of issues, including the way that they look at America. Both of them look at America as irresponsible, as the source of evil, as the world's bully. Well, let's grab a phone call quickly before the break. Let's go to Stephen, Shreveport, Mississippi. Stephen, you're on Focal Point. What's on your mind? Well, blessings to you. What's on my mind is the judgment that Jesus spoke of, which y'all have been talking about for several days. And I'd put you in remembrance of some other things Jesus said about judgment. He said, judge righteous judgment. And then he defined judgment as making a man every thought whole with the motive of his heart being love, first of all, the foundation. And uh, the word also says, I, the Lord, love judgment. I said judges owe the people to correct them. In, in the book uh, that I've read, the Bible, the judges are also called saviors, plural. You can go look that up. But uh, he said, I judge no one. But if I judge by seeking truth and love, my judgment is true. Hmm. All right, Stephen, listen, I appreciate that. Paul, you know, and it's interesting to me, the people that are that are constantly on us about being judgmental, constantly quoting that verse, they are the most judgmental people on the planet. Their criticisms of us are harsh, they're vulgar, they're obscene, and they are profane. Judge not, lest ye be judged indeed. Back with more calls, 888-589-8840. Stay with us.